Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org here with SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage from Dell World 2012 here in Austin, Texas. And segment we've got here is we're going to be talking about the maturation of Ethernet, 10 gig Ethernet, 40 gig Ethernet, latest generation of servers. And joining me is Brian Payne from Dell Server Division. Steve, Brian, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining. And uh, Greg Shearer, uh, who's with Broadcom, he does the strategy around kind of the interconnectivity and in, in, in the server piece. Great, Pleasure welcome back. Here. Thanks. Steve. So, but both of you guys have been on the cube before. Right. You know, uh, like to talk about you know the latest trends, what's going on in the industry, and really just dig a little deeper as to what's happening in the marketplace. So, if I could set the stage, uh, if we look at 10 gigabit Ethernet, you know, it's been around now for over a decade. It was ratified back in 02. Um, we've seen a really kind of slow, you know, adoption rate. Uh, the the numbers I heard is in uh, 2011, it was about at the server side, about 20% of all servers were adopted. Of course, earlier this year we had the Romley launch uh, from Intel. We had Intel CIO on uh, right. this morning talking about some of the adoption. And of course, Dell released the 12G servers right. to go along with that. So I uh, wonder, Greg, since, since you guys at Broadcom mm -hmm. are really the component side, seeing a lot of that server adoption, bring us up to speed. What have we seen in 2012 of adoption, 10 gig, yeah. where's it happening and what's going on? So we're, we're excited that we are starting to see the ramp of, of, of 10 gigs starting to climb. You know, as you know, Blade Servers has been the predominant marketplace for, for 10 gig, you know, mainly because of slot limitations and, and uh, just uh, you know, general I.O. constraints. Uh, 10 gig is, has really uh, led the way in, in Blades to start. We've seen moderate increases in the rack, and that's where we're really hoping to see a much broader adoption. Um, some of the segments like uh, Public Cloud, uh, they've you know, adopted 10 gig in, in a, a much broader way. Um, but you know, we're hoping to see, especially in the virtualization segment for the rack, a very, very broad market, to see that uh, really increase as we head into 2013. Okay, great. So, so Brian, how, how about you? Tell me from Dell's point of view, 12G launched earlier this year, what's the cost of customer adoption? You know, where are they finding you know, 10 gig really allowing them to do new things in their environments? Yeah, so uh, well, first of all, it's been just uh, an exciting year with 2012 launching 12G <laughs> and, and rolling that out. It's been unprecedented success. We've got a lot of growth going on in the, in the marketplace. You know, last week I was in, in the UK and, and, and talking with some of our customers. You know, one example, we had a, a customer that was progressive, uh, a financial co customer that was rolling out OpenStack to do their test and development, and they were saying, hey, I've got to, they were on Giggy today, and they said, I got to get to, to 10 gig quickly because as it stands, I can't spin up new, uh, you know, virtual machines quick enough. I, I need more bandwidth to, to roll that out there, and so, I mean, that's just one example. As, as we look at the, the broader marketplace, it's looking at a, at a recent research study about spending plans going forward. You know, at the top of, of customers list is kind of a North American, uh, Europe, mid and, and large companies. T at absolutely at the top of the list was 10 gig adoption in terms mm. of planning more spending. So I mean, I, I really, you know, to Greg's point, I think we're on the, on the cusp of, of things picking up and it's really virtualization that's driving it. So the concentration of virtual machines, the need to do live migration, have the bandwidth available for that is, is, is critical. And so we're very excited about the, the potential 10 gigabit uh, or, or 10 G base T certainly helps in terms of you know making that 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 leap to 10 gig a little bit easier for our customers. Okay, so. great. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you brought up 10 G base T. So if we you know talk about the application, if you dig down, you know. Most people don't think about the cabling, the physical mm -hmm. layer yeah. that really puts this. But uh, you know, those of us in the industry really have seen that there's, you know, one gig Ethernet is was like well over 90% running just twisted pair. You know, RJ45 connectors. You know, billions of ports out there, and so that technology being available for 10 gig has been a limiting factor. But it's a, it's a complicated uh, you know uh, discussion there because power and cooling. Mm -hmm. of, of the environment, the cost of uh, you know that environment. Um, uh, I actually, I published some research from Crehan Research, uh, some of the market studies. If you look, uh, adoption of 10G base T was really low. Q1, it actually notched up a bit, and then you know really started to accelerate in Q2 and, mm -hmm. and continuing Q3. So, you know, Greg, I mean, t t can you tease out for us some of the details on what do you oh, see you in bet. 10G base T? Who's doing it and why? So we're, we're very excited to see 10G base T really I'll say begin its ramp. As you say, it's it's one of those new technologies that's been around for a very long time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's an that oxymoron, right? The <laughs> new old technology. That's right. And I mean, just to put it in perspective, where 10 G base T started was in uh, 90 nanometer technology, and the, the power was was 
you know, different people would fudge in terms of what the real power was from a worst case standpoint, but there were multiple folks that had 15 watt solutions just for the, the, the physical layer device itself. And so a 15 watt device, when you add that to the controller, it was very difficult to get a single port uh, controller in, in a PCIe slot that had a limit of 25 watts. Yeah. So and there was no way to do it with a dual channel controller. And so, I mean, this is one of the beauties of, of silicon migration as we go from process to process. You know, we went from something that, that was very large to the point where, you know, 10G based T designs, the, the logic was larger than the controller behind it um, in terms of all the, the capabilities that it needed to support. Much of that was to support distance. Uh, along the way though, there's been wonderful progress though. You know, now we're, we're in 40 nanometer, a second generation of 40 nanometer on our way to 28 nanometer. And now we're looking at something that's a worst case power of around five watts and a nominal probably around three watts with a short reach capability uh, one of the things that the standard has done is that if you are just running short reach cables and short reach is defined as less than 15 meters or less, at startup they run a, a TDR, a time domain reflectometer to measure the distance and at, at that point uh, it's, it's really ingenious, we just cut the launch power in half and so you, you end up saving even more and go down nominal to probably just a little over a watt which is very respectable. Yeah. So. We're excited because now we have speed agility, and in the rack, this makes a, a tremendous difference. You no longer have to plan a 10 gig, you know, controller and a 10 gig switch. You can upgrade either side independently. Yeah. So, so Brian, uh, you know, when I talk to customers on on this issue, I find you know the big guys, the guys that are just going to roll out, you know, thousands of servers. You know, 10 G based T is not going to be for them. Power and cooling is really critical, and the power's not there. Um, you know, where do you, where do you see the cutover? Is is this still just mostly for enterprises that are upgrading but keeping most of their existing plant? You know, where does this fit into what you're seeing in customers? Well, I, I so so where do, where does Tenji Base T fit in? Tenji Base T fit in yeah. versus you know optical or even SSP plus. I, I actually, it, it, it's it's one of these things that's that's difficult to to predict, right? And and so you know that actually is something that as if we work with Broadcom and we look at at their roadmap and we looked at. You know what they have planned. We talked to our customers. They had a lot of uncertainty about you know which which technology they were going to adopt. We actually designed in modularity into our servers, and so actually, I no longer have to predict the future, right? Mm. We, we've we've actually designed the 12th generation of PowerEdge servers where the network, which typically has been embedded or a LAN on motherboard, if you will, a yep. LOM, you know, embedded in the in the server, where we've made a choice for our customers. We actually made that a module so that now our customers have investment protection where they can buy a PowerEdge server and have the ability to change that technology on their pace as they make the migration, as they make their technology choices. Right, and so, and so and my understanding it's not only just you know which interface you have, but it's one gig or 10 gig and you know potentially higher speeds in the future, right? Exactly, okay. exactly, and so I mean in, in, in that respect, we have, we have given our customers a lot of flexibility and a lot of investment protection. And what's cool about it though is that it didn't come with a loss of functionality. So we still have it fully integrated into our embedded management. In fact, the embedded management is probably the, the most exciting thing our customers are telling us about when they, uh, when, when they think about PowerEdge service. We just recently announced the ability to do support assist where you know now our, our Dell sub tech support can tie into that server and understand what's going on with the server when a, when a problem happens. And so when the customer calls them, they already know, they've already troubleshot it, and, and then with the embedded management, let's say that the, the network controller, Broadcom chips don't fail, but, but let's say that the, something happened with, it, with the, that interface, something became unseated, or, or it, it, there, there was a failure. We actually have the ability to pre-stage the uh, the the replacement or, or the you know the BIOS firmware and all the settings of that device, where all the customer has to do is simply slide the server out of the rack or the blade out, pop in the the new controller, and it will automatically reconfigure for them. So I mean, you know, the when when I say there's not a loss of functionality, we've actually increased the functionality to give customers okay. this flexibility. So, so, so Brian, what what is Dell doing to help customers with the adoption of 10 gig? Uh, I know you make it really flexible, yeah. but what advice do you give them? And, and you know, are there services that you're putting in place? Yeah. To help them with that rollout. I, that's a great point. So, you know, a, as we talk to our customers, a lot of the feedback we get is, hey, talk to me about, you know, my workload and, and, and give me some perspective about what 10 gigabit Ethernet is going to do for me in, in the workload. So as we build out, what, what, we, what, what that translates into is that we'll build out reference architectures and we'll actually simulate an environment 
We'll, we'll build reference architectures for a virtualized environment and try different workloads on it. We also are doing a lot of work around you know big data and building that out. And so we'll we'll try gigabit Ethernet, 10 gigabit Ethernet, and we'll we'll you know evaluate and then make a choice and then provide you know some commentary that customers can read and white papers on why we made the choice that we did. And then we can even go as far with our active systems as pre-configuring that for our customers and delivering it to, to their docs. So it's it's really trying to give them, put 10 gigabit ethernet in context of what they're trying to accomplish and, and making a recommendation when it makes sense for them based on the number of virtual machines they're hosting or the type of, of database they're hosting. Yeah, so, so I have to pounce on it. I heard you mention big data, which of yeah. course is a uh, you know, big trend here. I've seen some of your competitors uh, releasing new servers kind of optimized with a lot of storage internal rather than rather than having a SAN. So what's Dell's position? What product lines are you seeing uh, you know, implemented for things like Hadoop or other big data analytics applications? Yeah, uh, so, so really, kind of two parts of the, the Dell PowerEdge family. We, we have our PowerEdge uh, rack servers, and yep. so earlier this year we launched our PowerEdge R720XD, which is a 2U server that is capable of hosting 50 terabytes of, of, of data storage. Wow. So, I mean, it's just, we, we just launched four terabyte drives in that in the three and a half inch form factor. We also have the ability to support up to 25 two and a half inch drives in that system. And, and as you know, you know, in the big data kind of Hadoop rollouts, th this, is, uh, this is a great building block for those customers. On the other side, so, so that comes with kind of traditional Dell PowerEdge management features, our iDRAC with lifecycle controller that gave you that parts replacement you know, capability I talked about a minute ago. On the other side, though, is our PowerEdge C product line. And so uh, in September, we launched our PowerEdge C8000 family, which is a 4U chassis that has a lot of flexibility. It has flexibility for a bunch of compute, so, but it also has flexibility for GPU and other co-processing technology. But the last one, which, which ties back to your point, is uh, the ability to put in a bunch of disk sleds. So, so able to, to pack you know, uh, a bunch of 12 drive disk sleds into this 4U form factor. So as you look at customers that are going for maximum density and in their environment and uh, looking for the bare essentials, kind of what we see going on in the hyperscale space, mm -hmm. that's where the C8000 fits in right. and, and can be a platform so for hosting Is, is that part of the DCS group as Dell then, or is that, that yet another group? It, it's, it, if you have PowerEdge over here and you have DCS over here, right. they're, they're the best of both worlds kind of coming into this PowerEdge C lineup. No. And so as we want to bring hyperscale to the masses, that's where the PowerEdge C yeah, family and, fits and in. And you know, the latest numbers, hyperscale is one of those really kind of you know, bright spots in the whole overall server market, mm -hmm. big growth. Small number of customers today driving huge volumes, yep. and Dell's got the leadership position there. That's right. So, uh, That's you know, right. kudos to you on that. Thank you. Um, so, I guess if we we're looking a little bit down the line, uh, you know, Greg, so 10 gig, maybe we're finally, you know, starting to get adoption. Yes. So, everybody, of course, says, okay, what's next? So, 40 gig, you know, has been on the market for a while. You know, where are we with 40 gig? You know, are customers starting to adopt it when, you know, what, what's your take? We're actually seeing a very strong 40 gig adoption in the switch side from a from an inner switch link and aggregation you know layer. Um, we we think that, that that actually starts to migrate into the servers for for certain applications. You know, as we said, 10 gig you know adoption rate is still not massively high in the in the rack. Right. And here we're we're talking about 40 gig and even 100 gig that you know, we'll, we'll be in a position that, that we'll be sampling that to, to our major customers next year, and we expect that to launch with the next major, you know, uh, cycle. Uh, but, you know, some of the, the key technologies that I think are going to be required really to see broader adoption in 10 gig and especially in 40 gig and beyond, Dell's really been a pioneer in, in uh, NIC partitioning or NPAR capability. Uh, I, was, I was recently at a data center, this was a healthcare provider, and uh, they were just in process of migrating from one gig to 10 gig, and uh, the, the front of their servers, they're a Dell customer, I'm happy to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you know, front of the servers were, were very nice, everything dressed up. You went around to the back of the cabinets and they had 10 and 12 ports of one gig coming oh. out of each server. And it, it looked unbelievably complex. Right. And it's what may have started out really nice from a dress cable standpoint a few years later of, you know, reconfiguring and so forth was just awful. Yeah. And so these folks were really looking at what can we do to, to still manage the way we used to with one gig, but get, t you know, fewer 10 gig pipes so we don't have this cable mess. And, you know, NPAR technology is a great way to do that. You know, where each 10 gig pipe is, is logically divided up, the OS believes that it is separate individual NICs, except that now those NICs, you know, have the ability to have different quality of service 
from uh, both fixed bandwidth uh, requirements to say you can only get this much to even oversubscription and then using bandwidth uh, weighting and prioritization. So I think that's one of the things and that's, that's fully integrated into the whole lifecycle management right. in iDRAC to where it, it can be managed in an easy way. Because as we all know, new technology that I tend to live on, it's exciting to talk about, but if it's not simple to deploy, it, it becomes really a liability. And I think this is an area where Dell has really shined, is making that easy to manage, yeah. Yeah, and so making the transition yeah, Brian, easy. Brian, please you know, jump on in if you want to comment <laughs> on that kind of simplicity message. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely. Well, I think well, one of the things that's at play here is just within the IT organizations that, that we deal with, there are a lot of organizational boundaries that are getting blurred. And, and if you think about usage models you know, varying and, and, and different customers have different ways of coping, whether it's, hey, I want to retain my kind of traditional way of partitioning my network, and so MPAR makes sense for those guys, hey, we can enable that for them. But you know, if they're ready to go all the, the full convergence path, again, we're, we, we have the flexibility to go, go offer you know, that. So it's, it's a combination of making it very flexible for our customers, and then the simplicity comes in in the management interface and the ability to deploy and just manage that server through its life cycle, and, and that's where we're, we're just investing a lot of time and resources to just make the experience managing PowerEdge servers so much simpler. There are absolutely no agents required. That gives you a lot of OS flexibility, that kind of thing, and so, I mean, when I think of simplicity, I think about what we're doing in our embedded management, where we're leading and pioneering kind of new capabilities in the industry. Yeah, that, that convergence is definitely something we're seeing. Uh, back at Dell Storage Forum, I think yeah. we were talking about, uh, it was the, the Ecologic, you know, that, that's <coughs> embedded in the compute. Uh, you know, where, where do you think going forward, you know, are we still going to have just, you know, lots of servers and storage? You know, wh how much is that blurring of the line going to happen? You know, it's, it, we are in the midst of a, a, you know, serious transition in the, in the industry with, you know, the resurgence of DAS in a lot of cases, but mm -hmm. I, I think the most exciting thing that we're working on is what can we do with Flash? And, and we talked a little bit about this at, at Dell Storage Forum. We're still, you know, on the mission of extending that fluid data architecture where you get all the resiliency and the data integrity that you expect with a compelling array, but getting the performance of putting that Flash in the compute with on the, on the Express Flash drives that we pioneered in, in the in the PowerEdge product line. So, so I mean, that's the the exciting innovation. If I look out to 2013 and and you start to see solutions rolling out from Dell, those are the kind of exciting things that you're going to see coming from us. Okay, so uh, you know, my final area I want to cover is you know power. It's one mm -hmm. of those things you know that uh, you know a lot of times the green technologies get kind of poo pooed, but you know both Broadcom and Dell have been making some big pushes in that. Yeah. So Brian, your your folks were telling me about the kind of the fresh air, yeah. uh, you know, functionality, uh, you know, something I'm not too familiar with. So can you? You know what is that? And yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. So, 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 fresh air capability is uh, the uh, ability for our servers to tolerate temperatures that go up to 114 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 45 degrees C. Well, what what does that enable you to do? Well, actually, it means that you can run uh, your your servers in a in a data center that doesn't have chillers. Because if you look at a map of the world and you look at temperature fluctuations and 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 what happens. You actually, if, if our servers are capable of running at that 114 degrees for 90 hours out of the year, 110 for 900. And if you look at that, that means that North America, Europe, most parts of Asia, you can actually operate that way. Why, do, why does the customer care to do that? Well, if you think about cooling, providing a, a chiller for a megawatt of IT equipment, it's a $3 million capital investment. And so, uh, you know, there's some serious savings there. Another one though, if let's say you're not ready to make that leap, you know, and you're just thinking, well, hey, I, I've got the peace of mind of ride through that I know my powered servers can take these these temperature fluctuations and 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 operate, you know, uh, reliably without any you know compromise to the warranty. So so that's a capability that we support in the current generation of servers as well as our 11th generation oh, of servers. Yeah. We just uh, are in the process of rolling out what we call the fresh air uh, hot house. So literally a parking lot at our headquarters. It's going to be hosting three servers that are running live financial applications for one of our, our partners, Efron uh, partners, and or one of our customers, I should say. Anyway, running their real-time data analytics without any cooling. It's just sitting in an asphalt parking lot with air moving through it. Well, that's great. I talked to my friends down here in Austin, and they like to be able to walk around in their flip-flops, so they shouldn't have to put on their jackets to be able to go in the <laughs> that's data That's right, I, it, so it gets hot here. <laughs> it, it, it does, absolutely. So, Greg, you know, power, closing remarks. Uh, absolutely, so, you know, power, 
Broadcom tends to focus more on the the, the uh, you know component side of, of power, but you know Tripoli, your energy efficient Ethernet is something that we've spent a lot of time you know working with. Uh, we we talked about 10G base T and some of the power issues that it's had in the past. We've put a lot of effort into 10G base T, specifically to downshift from a power standpoint. If the link becomes underutilized, we'll shut that down to a very very low uh, rate of of uh, you know exchange of data to the point where you know, we save, a well, you know, a tremendous amount of power and get well under a watt, you know, yeah. nearly shutting the port off. And, and this is true for a lot of environments where maybe at night they don't have the same load. Um, and, you know, I think that both in the, the minor details like that as well as, and that this is true on both Broadcom switches and Broadcom controllers, um, but e even at, at the larger scale, we do feel very strongly in the enterprise environment on offloads where you know running offloads like iSCSI full HPA mm -hmm. offload, FCOE full HPA offload, we're sort of the, the hybrid car. You can think of it as kind of the, the hybrid analogy. We're the electric engine to the big beefy you know, V8 that sits up in you know, Intel land <laughs> <laughs> um, to where it's efficient and uh, offloads protocols very nicely. We can save as much as 90 watts per 10 gig port in a fully loaded uh, IO environment just by running that workload in the controller as opposed to using software in the host to run it. So that's kind of the, the continuum from the low level, uh, you know, energy efficient ethernet at the component level up through the system level and, and doing protocol offloads. So, so great, you know, uh, you know one, of, one of the things that really impressed me in the messaging at the show here, uh, me and Michael Dell said, if you're worried about you know, configuring your ports, you know, setting your VLANs, or you know, configuring your LUNs, you know, things are going to change. So, you know, flexibility built into the platforms, Dell working with partners to be able to, you know, all those you know, really deep uh, you know, things there, it, most of that stuff's automated and yeah, very flexible yeah. that's changed. So, Brian and Greg, once again, thanks for joining us here on theCUBE. Yeah. Uh, you know, appreciate the information and we'll watch the uh, 10 gig adoption as it grows. And uh, so this is Stu Miniman with wikibon.org and uh, we'll be right back with our live continuous coverage here from Dell World 2012 right after this brief break. First time on theCUBE, baby.